In this video, we are going to save this image going from this flat raw file to this contrast rich landscape scene by just applying a bunch of basic tonal adjustments. As always, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's jump into it. So here we are in Lightroom. This is the base raw file. You can see it's super flat, but the light in that situation was great. So we want to change that. First up, we need to expand the basic panel. And for this tutorial, most of the things will be happening in the basic panel with the tonal adjustments. You might think you could fix the scene by simply pumping up the dehaze slider. And to some degree, you're right. But increasing the dehaze will give you kind of a strange look overall. So let's not go this way. Instead, let's make use of tonal adjustments. First off, I'd like to bring down the exposure. This, of course, makes the whole shot a little darker. But when we take a look at the histogram, you can see we are not losing any details, just preparing the image for the upcoming adjustments. Now, with the photo being on the darker side now, I do want to continue by dropping the highlights. And at first, this doesn't change much, but I'm doing this because for the next step, I do want to raise the whites. And I do want to raise them quite a lot. And by previously reducing the highlights, we just prevent overexposure from kicking in. If you take a look at this program now, you can see it's looking much, much better by just bringing down the exposure to make the overall shot darker, dropping the highlights, and then just raising the whites. And thus we are spreading the histogram and just add some overall contrast. And the secret of how to save such flat images is to, of course you guess it, simply improve the contrast. We can further work on that by just bringing down the shadows. Again, just further making the contrast stronger, but just don't forget to check the histogram once in a while. At the moment, there is still some room left for the darker areas. So that means we could drop the blacks and in turn add some more contrast. Now by just making use of those few tonal adjustments, you can see we went from this flat raw file to this more dynamic landscape image. Of course, the contrast is still not perfect. For that, we could raise the white some more, spreading the histogram even further, but I don't really like how this looks. So let's undo that change. Instead, we could make use of masking and with the masks, just target local areas. So let's open up the masking panel. And I do want to start with the top portion of the image since that is lacking more contrast than the bottom part. For that reason, we can simply use a linear gradient, trying to cover all the mountains in the back giving this linear gradient a very soft gradient as well. So the edge isn't too visible. And what I want to do with this linear gradient is to just play around with the shadows and the highlights. So to add contrast, of course, you can again just drop the shadows. In this case, this doesn't do much. So let's try dropping the blacks, which looks much, much better already. Of course, we don't want to overdo it, but again, if we check the histogram, we can see there is no underexposure, so we can safely push it around a bit. That looks great. I do want to bring some more attention to that bright area on the mountainsides. However, I don't really want to make that area brighter. Instead, I do want to make the sky darker. So again, let's use a mask. And in this case, we can simply use a select sky mask. Lightroom does have problems selecting the sky in this case, but we can simply say subject and go with a linear gradient to, to just get rid of the selection near the mountains. So I think that's looking like a good mask. What I want to do next is just bring down the exposure and make the sky darker. Okay, we could maybe add a little bit of clarity to give those clouds some more structure, just like that. And then I do want to add another linear gradient for the part in the distance. So again, just covering those mountains like this. In this case, let's try raising the highlights just a bit. And I also want to add a bit of overall contrast. Perfect. And that is the image after the masking adjustments. You can see 
targeting things locally has improved the light situation of this image as well. And again, I just used a bunch of tonal changes to adjust the haziness of this image. If you still want to make this image clearer, at this point you could play around with clarity, texture and dehaze. So let's just give the dehaze slider a try. Looking to tickle out some more details in here, but I think this looks great. Overall, I'd like to add a little bit of vibrance as well. And at this point we're almost done. So on the left side you have the raw file which we have started with and on the right side you have the edited version after the basic adjustments by playing around with highlights and shadows. You can see we have added much more depth by changing the contrast. We can continue working on this image by doing a little bit of color grading. So let's go ahead and open up the HSL panel. I'd like to work on the saturation first. I have the feeling this shot might be a little too vibrant, so let's bring down the yellow saturation, which will make the mountains a little less saturated. And I'm also going to drop the blue tones. Perfect. Besides the color corrections, what we can do in the HSL panel as well is to adjust the contrast some more. And for that, we are going to switch into the luminance tab. Luminance basically controls the brightness of a color tone, which means if, I go, if I'm going to increase the yellow luminance, I will make all the yellow tones in the image brighter. And this affects the bright areas on the mountain face. So let's bring up the yellow luminance. And as we're just adding a bit more light to this scene, just like that. At this point, you could add more contrast by bringing down the blue luminance, making the sky darker. But of course, this is a very heavy change. So that's not for everyone. Maybe I'm going to drop it very, very slightly. But that looks good for me. All right, for this image, I'm not going to touch the split toning, but I do want to head into the calibration tab and just bring up the blue saturation slightly. All right, and then one more thing we want to do in the details tab is the sharpening. So let's drop the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking, and of course, increase the amount of sharpening. And here we have the final image. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.